And now we will discuss a simple machine known as the wheel and axle. And here's a picture of one. The wheel and axle consists of two cylinders fastened together and the large cylinder is called the wheel. Even if it isn't used as a wheel for rolling it's still called the wheel and the small cylinder is called the axle. And the two are fastened together in a rigid manner. That is, the axle doesn't rotate relative to the wheel. When the device rotates, the entire thing rotates as a unit. Now, the term wheel and axle are probably part of your everyday vocabulary. You've seen wheels and axles in use before. You might have seen a setup that looks something like this in a small toy, a little toy car or something like this. In a toy, though, what you typically have is the wheels rotating around the axle. The axle bears the load or the weight of the car and then the wheels rotate around it as it rolls. That's not what's going on here. In this case we have the wheel and axle rotating together rigidly as a single unit. You can have a wheel and axle like you see pictured here but the wheels would not be rotating around the axle. The entire thing would be moving together as one single piece. Now let's talk about how the wheel and axle can be used to multiply a force. Take a look at this. Here's a wheel and axle and the, the wheel and the axle are both longer than what we had looked at earlier but that's okay. We still have a larger radius piece and a smaller radius piece fastened together. Now imagine grasping the large part over here, the wheel, the wheel part and turning it with your hand. Because it has a larger radius a point here on the edge of the wheel is going to be moving around in a circle here and will move a larger distance than a point over here on the edge of the axle section. They'll both be moving together but the point where the radius is larger over here will be moving a lot farther. The point over here at the tip moves less distance but it does so with a larger force. So again we see this trade-off between force and distance. So we'll take some notes over here on this end. We get a larger distance. And over here we get a smaller distance. But we get a larger force. And you probably recognize this particular shape as it, the way it's illustrated here. It looks something like a screwdriver. And this is ex exactly how a screwdriver works. You apply a turning force over here, what you would think of as the input force, and you get out a force over here at the tip of the screwdriver that screws the screw into a piece of wood. Now you can probably imagine how difficult it would be to screw a screw into a piece of wood using only your fingertips. The screwdriver, though, gives you an advantage. Specifically, it gives you a mechanical advantage because of the larger radius of the handle.